Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, how you doing? My name is Talib Kwali. You are now in tune with the world's best podcast, People's Party. How you doing? Always and as usual, have my lovely and talented and always thought-provoking co-host Jasmine Lee in the place to be. What's up, Jasmine? How you feeling? What's up? I'm feeling good. Got my workout on this morning. I see you're looking fresh-faced. You got your new, you got your hair done in quarantine. You stunting on it. Yes. (laughs) Now, today's episode, man, listen, I'm so excited. I've been trying to plan this episode for a long time. Um, This guest, this guest is an icon of the culture. And I know a lot of people are going to be super, super excited because I don't think people have really done the deep dive on this guest that this guest deserves. Man, well, let me just start with this. This guest, energetically, feels as young and fresh now as she did when she first came out, but she matched that energy with wisdom with spiritual wisdom, with experience. She's always pushing herself to evolve. As an MC, and I say an MC, not a rapper, but as an MC, she has a combination of bars, delivery, stage presence, I mean the whole package. When she was 15 years old, she joined the legendary hip hop collective 36 Mafia. She was on legendary albums like Mystic Styles and Chapter One, The End, and Chapter Two, World Domination. and. Meanwhile, she's also pushing a solo career. She had Inquiring Minds 1 and 2, the hit Where Them Dollars At, followed by the album Both World Star 69. Man, she does all types of mixtapes. I can't even keep up with the mixtapes. I tried to listen to all the mixtapes before I did this interview, but there's too many. She got best feature people that you could get. I'm talking about features with Yellow Wolf and Eminem. Features with Run the Jewels. Features with Outkast, Gucci Man, Little John. We talking about this woman has range. We talking about the queen of the South. We talking about the first lady of the three six mafia. We talk about Miss Where Them Dollars At. We talk about the boo print herself. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Gangsta Boo. <laughs> Yes. What's up? What's that up, was a, That was an intro. That was an introduction. <laughs> that got to go on an album. <laughs> hey, man. I, you, know, you know, I also rap, too. You know, you yes. can rap on an album, that too. That was awesome. <laughs> now, um, you and I connected. Uh, first of all, I'm a huge fan, and thank you for being on the show with us. You and I connected on IG. I was following your IG. You commented on something that I had said on IG, and I started following you, and we got... Uh, in the DMs, and I was like, "What's up, gangsta boy?" And he was like, "My name is Lola." He was like, "My name is Lola." <laughs> so, so for this interview, are we to call you Lola or to call you Gangsta Boo? You can call me Lola or Gangsta Boo. Honestly, it's whatever. But my okay. first name is Lola, so okay, yes. all good. Yeah, I now, like to go um, Lola. No doubt, Lola is a great name, great song too. Um, yeah. Now we're we gonna start off. That's Lola not the one I was thinking. I was thinking about Lola. La, 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 la. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of good Lola songs. A lot um, of them. A lot of them. I want to start off talking a little bit about Memphis, Tennessee, in particular, White Haven, which you call Black Haven due to its population. Black Haven. Um, you know, Memphis, Tennessee, one of the most iconic musical cities on the planet, one of the most iconic Black cities on the planet, a rich yeah. and painful Black history. This is where Martin Luther King was murdered. We talked about the Lorraine Hotel earlier. Um, you got Beale Street. You got Memphis Blues, which is a very specific type of blues. A launch pad for Elvis, B.B. King, Aretha Franklin, Otis Redding, and of course, Three Six Mafia. Yeah. How do you think that all of these cultural influences and the sort of vibe of the city of Memphis now came together to shape your style? I don't even know. I think it's literally just... Um... DNA or something, dude. This must mm. be in the muddy Mississippi water or something. Because mm. honestly, I, I just remember growing up listening to Isaac Hayes or Al Green or mm-hmm. just, just you know, just listen to old school stuff. We call it pimping. We yeah, call Memphis it known for pimping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> they say Memphis is the money, pimping hoes and style is Memphis. But Memphis. But you know, know Chicago that. known for pimping, the Bay Area known for pimping. Oh, Atlanta yeah, try to get his <clears throat> try to get his pimping thing on, you know. Um now for someone as iconic as you, there's not a lot about your backstory. There's your story sort of in the press starts 
with you joining three six the chief of the reefer that's the first thing i could find yeah you know? that's the first song i did yeah so is that for a particular reason do you keep your your, your home life close to the vest or that's just how it had panned out to be 100 percent honest i am a very very private person i'm mm. super shy like i don't even really like doing a lot of interviews or nothing like that but at the same time i don't understand why it's not much press about about you know i don't know i guess Greatness takes time and, you know, my story is still developing. And I like, I like what you said. I'm always evolving and trying to push myself to further limits. So I guess my story is still being developed. <laughs> I'm assuming, yes. you know what I mean? Because right. I'm private, but I don't know if I'm that private. But yeah, I do. I do like my personal life and shit is private. Like, you know what I mean? But the song uh, Chief of the Reaper is the first song, solo song that I did do with Paul. Right. It was on one of his mixtapes. So that's pretty accurate. It's a lot of accurate information out there. So Okay. I need a sip of whatever that is so I can it's get my water. um day Girl, started. I, I oh, it's water. Oh, baby. Oh. baby. <laughs> baby. I got that at home. It's just fancy in a fancy glass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I've heard you mention Motown in a lot of interviews, particularly Marvin Gaye. Marvin um, Gaye. Who you sampled on Out the Trap. What is it about his energy and timelessness that inspires you during this wave of your career? Dude, Marvin Gaye, I don't know. Like, I was watching him last night uh, mm. on YouTube. He just reminds me of my dad. My dad, um, mm. just any type of nostalgic music like uh, Marvin Gaye, David Ruffin. I mm. just always try to put myself in my mama's shoes or my daddy's shoes and think about the good times that they were having at them times when they were dancing and stuff. And my mama told me that she threw her panties on the stage to Marvin Gaye. <laughs> <laughs> was he singing yeah, sexual he healing? Stage. That's that sexual healing. <laughs> uh, so just the passion that they, <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm jealous, mama. So just the passion <laughs> that they had when they sung their songs and so, you know, a lot of the tragedy in their stories, it's just, mm. I don't know. It's in a, it's very intriguing to me. It, mm. It's really intriguing to me. And for the most part, just the passion and the way they were singing their music and the, the way they was confessing their love to women. You know, mm. we don't hear that no more. So I just, I'm kind of stuck in the seventies to be yeah. honest. Yes. Yeah. Big time. Got it. You shouted out uh, Isaac Hayes earlier. I, I forgot to mention Stax records, yep. of course, um, huge legacy um, yeah, and rivaled, rivaled the, the uh, Motown legacy. Um, yeah. Now I hear a lot of that sort of Memphis blues in three six mafia production style um yeah. they used to be called backyard posse but changed the name to triple six mafia then mm -hmm. three six mafia now um in new york city around the time like shortly before three six came out and around the whole time there was this thing called horrorcore music you had groups yeah. like flatliners and all that and people was employing they love for horror movies and sort of dealing with dark subject matter at the time 666 of course is the mark of the beast devil's number and on Mystic Styles, there was a lot of satanic occult references being used for the music. Um, how did you feel about that mythology and those those sort of darker themes uh, coming into Three Six? I was totally with it, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like, I, you know, not you know, I wasn't um, and you know, um, uh, worshiping the devil or nothing like that. But meaning, I was just always into like right now. I'm into true crime. I'm into mm -hmm. psychology behind it, like the the mind state of murderers or mm -hmm. sociopaths or narcissists, like any type of thing yeah. that um, that has to do with the mentally ill. I don't know. It's intriguing, especially when it comes to serial killers. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of that come from me, I'm obviously just starting to like the 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 pianos, the the, mm -hmm. the, the bass. Like, um, like the Michael Myers uh yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just um Lokes, you know, mm. all black, you know, that was my way of being gothic, I guess. Mm. Black lipstick, right. you know what I'm saying? Witchy, yeah, yeah. but I didn't really I didn't even know what the hell I was doing, to be honest. So it was like a it was like a vibe. It was like a like a fashion. That's exactly. Vibe. It was like a vibe. We had a Yeah, people a, a talk vibe. about People talk about uh, artists being a part of the occult and they use, they be like, well, did you see what Jay-Z and Beyonce was wearing? Did you see? And I'm like, nah, that's just rock star shit. That shit just be looking mm -hmm. fly to them. They're yeah, not thinking that, that deep about they it. They be killing me with that Illuminati shit because I, <laughs> I, I, I don't go too off in that shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just a cool look. It's a cool vibe. And to be honest, you know, um, 
hey, you know, I, I was definitely like I, when I was young, I was um, intrigued with what's what, you know, um, New World Order around that time. I was just mm-hmm. interested in everything that they were talking about because I looked up to, to them at the time. Mm-hmm. So um, if they called themselves the devil's this, then I called myself the devil's that. And but it wasn't right, the next. devil's daughter. He was back, yeah. then, back there. Yeah, yeah. I called myself Gangsta Buddha, the devil's daughter. <laughs> and yeah, and, and you know, people were scared of that we used to have our own language that we mm-hmm. talked um, to like trick not trick fans but just it was um i wouldn't say it was a character but you know what i'm saying with mm-hmm. entertainment yeah like a horror movie yeah. it's entertaining yeah like, yeah like people watch true crime consider it like yeah. that but not to make it seem like it was some acting acting but it was just mm-hmm. like we were in a, we created our own horror film and it was called triple six mafia mm-hmm. right. right i went through a, a golf stage in my head my mom wouldn't fully buy me all of the things i wanted but i tried to gather up as much black clothing I could at one point just because yeah, I saw it that on TV. Think? I wonder why do we go through that stage, I wonder. I, I don't know, but it was it was cool to me and it was more about fashion than yeah. about being sad, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's I like rebelling. It's like rebelling mm-hmm. against what, what society tells you is right. A lot of the <laughs> stuff, whether you are a religious person or not, I think everybody on this call can, can agree that there's a lot of like the way that religion and spirituality is presented to us is very hypocritical when it comes yes. from the, the society and the status quo. And when you're a kid, you start seeing through some of that shit. Sometimes you go left the other direction. Mm-hmm. I agree with that 100%. And now that's why I'm, I tend to be more spiritual than religious because, you know, it's just the stuff that I've researched and been through and it just works for me. Like, that's why I meditate and shit mm. and listen to like the side gurus. And, but then I go listen to one of my favorite gospel songs or then I go and listen to some Project Pat. So mm-hmm. yeah. that, I do that yes. there right But um, um, I used to like the gothics. I used to like listen to like Avril Lavigne. No doubt, like simple kind of like, like, yeah, just... Yeah, and you know, remember that movie? Uh, not the movie, the video. Simple kind of like, with no doubt, she had the pink hair, but she was running through like yeah, a yeah, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, like, great video. Yeah, it was just very just um creepy and eerie. I liked Evan mm. Essence. I don't know. I just like mm. dark vibes. Whoever was my girl. Mm. Shout out to her. Uh, <clears throat> you came into Three Six Mafia around the time Smoked Out, Loked Out, Loked Out dropped, um, along with Crunchy Black. His daughter. Oh, actually- his daughter, rest in peace, Ashley Richardson, was shot and killed last August. Have you spoken with him since that um, tragedy? And how is he holding up? Yeah, we talked like literally all the time. I talked to him last night. I was um in the studio and I ran into CeeLo. Shout out to CeeLo Goody and um, Gib Goody and all Sugar of them. Low. Mike. Yeah, I was in Stankonia. And so every time I'd be around like them, I just I, I just automatically be like, oh, let me video Crunchy. Like, so me and Crunchy are really close. That's like my brother. So yeah. I was on video chat with him last night and let him talk to CeeLo and stuff. And he doing just as about as, you know, you would figure him to be doing. I mean, I don't have a child that, that has been murdered. I don't have a kid at all. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know the the, the mental c- capacity of one, um, what they would deal with when they're going through that. But yeah. um, he, he, yeah, he in good spirits. Yeah, him good spirits, considering the fact. Yeah, well, our condolences absolutely go out to Crunchy Black and his family. Yeah, and it's a tough one. It's a tough one. She was cool yeah. as hell. That was my partner, man. Yeah, that's a that's is a tough one. Even for us who don't know her, that's it's tough to hear about. So I can imagine how it's tough for the actual family. Um, yeah, and then like I think like a week or so after that, my brother died. He didn't get murdered or anything, but he had an enlarged heart. He died just mm. randomly. Like we thought it was cold. We didn't know what it was until the autopsy came back. He had just turned fifty. And um, wow. yeah, I got the call in LA and that he was found from a welfare check that my family did on him because they hadn't heard from him in two days. He mm. was dead on the floor in the living room. So it's like this mm. year is like, whoa. But Sorry you know, to hear that. Our condolences yeah, to man. you too. We out here, boy. We out here, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why we got to celebrate the life we do have because it could be snatched in three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. We all, we all out here th- th- thriving. Wish I could be on tour right now. Shout out to COVID. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, t- I tour a lot. I tour a lot. So, I mean, I, I've heard you say in interviews that you want to you wanted to tour forever like an old rock band. Um, I feel the same way. You know, before uh, COVID, I was touring 200 days a year. And so I've had to find different ways. In this quarantine, um, how have you find, found different ways to keep your sanity, especially as someone who's a performer like me who needs to be the, on that stage? Man, to be honest with you, dude, uh, I don't even know how the hell, like, I'm um, even like this year went by so fast. I think uh, for me, what was helping was definitely the the, the weed. <laughs> to be honest, right. in LA, the weed just to be one hundred, just and a lot of meditation and just 
rethinking and re strategizing. Like, because I thought like, oh, you know, I'm going I'm to be able to perform forever. Like, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But then shit changed like that. And, you know, so just made me rethink like, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I might need to tap more into some real estate. I might right. need to just, you know, just gave me more things to think about. And it made me put my big girl panties on. So it really worked well. And then I'm so fortunate that I still have good people on my team, like the runner jewels or whatever, because we did a. Uh, um, I'm on I'm on that recent project and uh, we did the song Walking in the Snow um, Great for song. Adult Swim. Yeah, and it was so cool because that was my first time being on a stage this year. Right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It was nice. It was set up. I had to do the whole COVID test stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like Tyler so I always end up in a, a position that just motivates me times a thousand. So when I do take 10 steps back, I always get like a million steps for it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's been like a balance, but it's been more ups and down. And I just really just try to talk to friends, stay positive, and just keep thinking of ways to stay paid. Yeah. Meaning what's yes. ways to stay sane because I I, I think I, I do that more. And because I feel like as, I, as long as I got my sanity, the money will come. Yes. Amen that's that's that. true. And um, the, the, I don't want to say the perks of COVID because so many people have lost their lives because of the virus, but it has forced a lot of us to sit down and regroup. And maybe it was a lot of people that really needed that, like always ripping and running every time is not so good. So maybe you needed to me. reconnect with those That's people. Me. Yes, Tyler, you're me. never in the same place for more than nah. two seconds. And you've been able to wow. relax. No, I'm healthier now than I've been in 20 years. And, you yep. know, wow. I was on the road feeding my family. And I didn't realize, you know, it makes sense in the abstract. Of course, if you spend time in one place, if you're not on the road, you're not, uh, I'm not smoking and drinking as much. It makes sense intellectually, but I justified my behavior because I'm like, this is what I do for a living. I got to feed my family. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when that's not available to me, I focused on, you know, trying to get healthier. And I'm like, damn, like, man, I just feel way better. And now if yes. I do go back on the road, I'm going to do it smarter. Definitely. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Now, Lola, you um mentioned you was in the studio last night. A good friend of mine, Corey Moe, posted a picture of him uh, in the studio. Was you in the studio with Corey Moe? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to did, did me and Corey, take, we did take a photo, huh? Well, I, I, you wasn't in the picture. It was it was him, CeeLo, Killer Mike at Stankonia. So when, uh, I, when you said uh, yeah, what you said, I'm like... Yeah, I wanted to take a picture with CeeLo. I should have gotten that photo off of Corey. Yeah. Yeah, my Atlanta boy. Yeah, I had a session last night at Stankonia because, you know, I like recording it because that's why I recorded it before when I did. Call the, before I come. I call before I come yeah. first. So it was just, it's always dope to see them, man. See my Southern boys. Yeah, man. LA, I don't get that vibe because it's not like I'm in LA hanging around the Snoops or the Warren G's or, you know, like the West Coast OG's. Yeah. So sometimes I forget that I, I do be focused way more on Lola in LA versus Gangsta Boo. But Gangsta Boo definitely got to, you know, make her rounds and stuff because out of sight, out of mind yeah you know that is a real thing it is um yes. tell us about yes, work, working thing. on that um that song because um i've also heard you say which give one? uh call before i come which is Ooh. first of all i want to give outcast a props because that song is the best one when it comes to sexual relationships um <laughs> this uh, men need to learn that they need to make their partners come first. And and that song yes, really, that, that, that. Taught, that taught a lot of us that. I mean, I knew that before the song, yeah. but it taught a lot of men that. Um, I've heard you mention that Outkast is one of the groups that had their own style um, coming out of Atlanta, where a lot of groups were, were obviously influenced by the Memphis sound. So talk to us about working with Outkast at that time in your career. Man, that's one of my greatest accomplishments. Like I look at the plaque that I got from that as like, like, I don't know how people feel about the Grammys or whatever, you know, but I look at that as like a Grammy award to me. Yeah. That's like one of my best faves. That's my best. Like, like, damn, like I worked with Outkast, Andre 3000 and Big Boy. Mm -hmm. Um, I just always much respect for Dungeon and Goody Mob and just their whole sound because they they did carry Atlanta on their back for a long time when Andre yeah. said the South got something to say. South that's all I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that shit is like tear jerky for me. I'm already yeah. emo as hell. <laughs> and just to, 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 to watch that video because I watched I've been I watched it a couple of times recently, mm -hmm. and um, I heard his voice kind of if you if you watch it his voice kind of tightened up. It cracks. I don't a know. Bit. I, mean, I, I can imagine how it's just low, like stupid, you know, embarrassed. That, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people it's don't really understand like, the vibe. You know? A lot of people you was there, you was around, you was an artist yeah. at that point. A lot of people don't understand the vibe. How New York? I'm a New Yorker. So yeah. I know that, you know, I wasn't listening to no 3-6 Mafia, nothing like that. I was, at the most, I was listening to Ghetto Boys, maybe. 
You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> maybe said, Ghetto Boys, maybe MC Bree, <laughs> rest in peace with Flint. You know, but um, yeah. when when Andre said that, I had just recently became an Outcast fan. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't catch the first album. I, I had it, but I didn't really. I didn't even unwrap the pack because I was rolling weed on that motherfucker. You know, like yeah, I, I got yeah. AT Aliens. When I got AT Aliens, I got into that album, and then I went back to Southern Cadillac playlist of music. Wow! And I was like, man. And then when Goody Mob came with Soul Food that year in '95, the same year that Andre said that at the Source Awards, I was like, oh, the South do got something to say. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so hell yeah, yeah, for me, for me to work with them. It was just an honor because it's you know they picked me. They didn't ask for the whole group. Shout out mm -hmm. to the group, but you know it was like yo, we want gangster boo, right. and you know it's just it was you know it's just still shocking to me. Like when I saw CeeLo as last night, I grew up with them, but I still see them and be like, damn, mm -hmm. my friend Legends is this cool? Yeah. Like I look at A Ball MJG like that. That's I'd be right. Like, like damn, man, my right. partner's Legends. Like they yeah. just got star yes. quality. And I respect how Andre and B Big move because they move click tight. They seem to definitely keep it real with their friends. I mean, they got the same goddamn circle from what I be seeing. And That's they right. stay out the way and they make Dungeon great, family. timeless yeah. music, man. And for me to be a part of that, she now, then <laughs> and now, it's still like mind blowing, to be honest. Yeah. I'm from yeah. New York too. And I remember when uh, I first heard uh, Three Six Mafia because my cousin, was from <laughs> Memphis and he came, I was 12. I don't remember what year that was, oh, but Lord. my cousin um, was from Memphis and he came to New York for the summer and he was playing, sipping on some scissor and he was jumping around like this. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Damn, like, he was, and he was, he was like, 12 when sipping on scissor came up? Yes. Well, <laughs> okay. I don't know when it officially, when the mute, when the video was out, I was 12. I don't oh, know, wow. you know, a lot of times songs come out before the video. But, um, and he was like bouncing all around and we were like <laughs> looking at him like, what are you doing? Like, sit down. And then like a couple of years later, I moved to the South and I was like, oh, so this is how the South gets down. All right, right. I'm ready now. Sipping on uh, syrup. Yeah, man. Sipping on some scissors. Shout out to Project yeah. Pat. Um, so these days, a lot of rappers have labels or at least they own imprints. But in 1997, when Hypnotized Minds came together, it wasn't that common. So can you talk to us about the vision of DJ Paul and Juicy J and Lord Infamous and starting mm -hmm. a label back then to make sure that y'all had ownership. So be really honest, dude, I was so damn young and um, mm -hmm. thugged out, so to speak, um, <laughs> and really wasn't on the business part of it. But mm -hmm. hindsight 2020, they definitely had some goddamn sort of mission, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Lord Infamous, you know, definitely was the, um, a co-founder. I mean, he came up with mm -hmm. the name, and um, yeah. I don't really know what was in their heads. <laughs> you know, rest I, in peace to Lord Infamous. Yeah, Ricky Dunnigan, South Memphis vet. Um, you know, I also heard you speak about how Lord Infamous and them invented flows that other artists use. Like, and you know, you know what? I, you talking about you, what you gonna say? Oh well, you know. So there was beef. There was a beef that I I, see, I seen the interview with Project Pat talking about beef between y'all and uh, Bone Stugs. And he was like, we were just kind of on the same vibe and we didn't realize how much alike we were. But when I went back, I listened to like some Skinny Pimp today and some and some shit. And I'm like, yeah, this, this, I could see where they was like, oh, this feel like what we doing. And right. the same thing with, with what Migos is doing. And, right. and and the same thing when I when I listened to what you and Juicy J and them was doing, and then I hear Plain Jane and some of the other things that ASAP Ferg and right. them was doing. I'm like, yo, everybody is mining this sound. So yeah. I just wanted to pretty, give you a chance. Yeah, I wanted to give you a chance to shout out Lord Infamous, particularly because he, uh -huh. you know, he's resting in peace because I know he was an originator of that style. He was he was definitely like, you know, him and all of the, like, you know, even the skinny pimps, they, you know, they they had the triplet flows and stuff. Mm -hmm. But in fairness to cats like them, he goes, I can't sit up and say um, that they studied Lord Infamous. You know what I'm okay. saying? They probably was listening to somebody that was listening to Lord Infamous. It's kind of like a trickle. That effect. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And, that, and I had to like realize that too. You know, you, when you you say stuff because you hear stuff and you be like, oh, well, nah, this what happened. But in reality, like hindsight twenty twenty, me he goes, I, I really don't think they were just like bumping Lord of Mistakes. Not saying they're not a fan or whatever, but if anything, they were like playing somebody that probably played Ricky, or they was probably fucking with Juicy or something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's 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 a it's a difference a little bit. But uh, Memphis, we was just before our time, um, in a sense, but. Who who knows where that goddamn 
triplet flow or mm-hmm. sound come from, but Memphis cadence is different. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I just think that, I mean, for all of us, I mean, I, I just said to you that when I first started listening to hip hop in 95, I wasn't listening to 3-6, but I would be lying if I didn't say that the rise of 3-6 Mafia and Hypnotize Mind didn't influence me as an artist. Absolutely wow. influenced me. And I, I mean, you know, just I got younger people around me all the time. And yeah. I've been listening to a lot of your music recently, getting re- ready for this interview. And what keeps happening yes. is people keep being like, I know that song. That sound like this person. That sound, and I'm like, yeah. maybe, maybe that's you. Y'all don't understand, you know, the influence. Yeah. You know, it's real. It's like I, I, I appreciate you wanting to give props to the younger artists because clearly, I mean, I'm influenced by Migos. They've done songs yeah. that made me want to go in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, so the influence yeah. goes full circle. But we have to yeah. give our flowers and the props where it's due. I definitely wish. I definitely wish that was more showed. And uh, it's it's a thin line mm-hmm. somewhere where it's like. Oh, you got, I guess, because you got some bitter. Uh, I don't even like the word old artist or older generation. I don't even like that. That shit just sound crazy. Mm-hmm. But you know, originators versus uh, unoriginators or in, uninnovators. Like I just wish, you know, people definitely um, not compare people so much because it seems like mm-hmm. that drives make the people resent them. Like mm-hmm. example, I think I'm resented a lot by certain females before they even get a chance to meet me because they hear that they sound like me so much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, damn. And I, I don't know, it's just a feeling that I have. You know what I'm saying? Because you could tell, you could tell when it, um, love reached out, you could tell when people are doc- um, ducking and dodging and even saying your name. They say everybody else's mm-hmm. name, everybody, else, everybody, else, everybody else, but you, but sound just like you. But I, it's because of resentment and because of the, some fans and media kind of pin people against each other and shit like that. Yeah. Man, I, I like to say these young up, you know, the I'm young. So the younger, mm-hmm. they they that right. definitely in, inspiring. And I, I like really what everybody doing. Um it would be definitely more flattering to um, you know, definitely um uh let for them to let their fans know what inspired them, but the real yeah. truth, mm-hmm. not a lie or not yeah. some arrogant ego shit. That's that's really all I would like to see. Instead yeah, of it being think, like some thinking uh, motherfuckers being bitter or hating or whatever. Yeah. I think you're correct. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Where Them Dollars At because that's such a big song. And speaking of female artists, you remixed it in 2018 with Asian Doll and Cuban Doll. You've always shown an affinity for other female artists. But talk to me about making that song and the, your whole mind state going into Inquiring Minds, the debut album. I was young. I was first of all, I was like 18 and I really didn't know much. I was just really doing whatever Paul asked me to do, to be honest. But I was a good writer, but I didn't even realize how much of a good writer I was until like I got grown, grown. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just remember us being in the studio, me and my homegirl named Tanya and this girl named Lynn was just um, hanging out. And I remember asking my girl, um, she was a stripper in Atlanta. I asked her what, um, where they stand in the strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? And also yeah. the beat um was inspired by Show Enough, Tila. I was in the club showing up. Jazzy Faye yes. the beat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, wow, I forgot about Tila. I ain't heard Tila's name in a minute. Yeah, man. It was Tila. Memphis yeah. 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 Yeah, some shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was just like that. I, I, that was the inspiration behind me talking to one of my strip partners and just being crunk. Definitely uh, influenced by Paul and Juicy, and really, yeah, that's it. Where the dollars at, nigga? Where the dollars at? Like I said, it was, it was, I was, I was real, real, uh, I was real innocent and naive back then. Real, like, re- like, real, like, straight from Memphis. That was my first time, even in New York, type shit, doing a video. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what the hell was going on. Mm-hmm. Like nothing. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're young, you don't know, and then you get older, you hindsight 2020, 20, you'd be like, damn, I ain't no shit. Right. You know what nah, I mean? That's real. That's have real. you guys seen P Valley? I have not, man. I've heard about it. And I know it's a lot of Memphis influence in there. I yes, seen it. and and not only that, well, you got, you got it's an amazing show. And, I heard. and I, hopefully they don't hopefully they don't uh commercial it up for season two because season one was like great and raw. What's it on? But um it's on stars. And I'm not going to lie, I waited until Power came out and I watched them together because I didn't want to be having to pay double subscriptions. But anyway, <laughs> um, in the in the show, it talks about pretty. It, it, one of the rappers is like, you know, starting out in the strip club. So I just find it very interesting that you said that you talked to one of your stripper <clears throat> homegirls to see what's 
popping in the club because that's really where music gets like yeah. really hot at. I, I used to I always ask my stripper friends, what do they say in the strip club? <laughs> yeah, man. When you turned 21, um, you felt like the wildlife has, well, actually, because you started so young, probably, when you turned 21, uh, you felt like the wildlife had caught up with you and you became a Christian. How did your faith that at that time clash with the symbolism, lyrics, and the name Three Six Mafia? Well, I was depressed. I, you know, like I, I, I was depressed, but I didn't realize I was depressed. I never been diagnosed depressed or whatever by a doctor or anything. But I self um, help myself a lot. I read a lot and I research a lot, and it's like, you know, I, I know, I know what it was at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I was raised Baptist. You know, Bible Belt, my mom and all that. Yeah. And so all I knew was, yo, if you feeling low, go to church, go to church. And so I had yeah. a good mentor. His name is Mr. Dale. Shout out him. He was just um, influencing me on reading more he bought me this book called uh seven spiritual laws of success that was my first time reading a deepak cobra book shout out to deepak uh he had yeah. me he had me I, I, perform I, I, I at chopra one of his cobras, it's, like, it's, 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 it's chopra he had me perform at one of his retreats before that was really fun i read that book dude and i was like 21 and to be honest that's where it kind of started my life start shifting in a sense where I start focusing on um, energy and karma more and stuff like that. Now I know that's the transition kind of went up a, a religion role into like a spiritual metaphysical mm-hmm. world. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as far as the three, six, it didn't, um, it, yeah, no, everything was totally fine. Like I said, I didn't even know what I was doing then. You know, I was just 21 years old. Like, Oh, I'm done rapping. I had to perform on Jenny Jones show that day. I didn't even show up. Jenny <laughs> Jones. Yes. Yeah. But I, you know, I was only 21. Had I had, had I had someone to tell me, you know, or to, you know, motivate me or coach me into just how to act, or, um, how to, you know, uh, process the emotions I was feeling at the mm-hmm. time, because, mm-hmm. you know, I was a, the only female in the group. There were some wild boys, you know, mm-hmm. and a lot of things that were going on, we were just young and wild. And that's what kind of caught up, not necessarily much, because I was young as fuck. I mean, what really caught up from me being 14 or 21 it's like six seven years not much but it was things that was going on that i didn't know how to process so it kind of led me into depression and then i just ended up on a journey a lot of people in our community deal with depression and it never gets diagnosed so you were very blessed and privileged to be able to sort of self-diagnose at such a young age i appreciate Mm -hmm. that i think i got it man i had to got got the wise for my dad i mean Rest in peace to the king, because I I don't I mean that he's the only person I think of like I mean well not think of it's like I know I got my wits from him, mm-hmm. because he wasn't really into you know um, having a doctor diagnose him with shit like that if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Without going yeah, into no, too I, many I, details, yeah. I don't do prescription pills and stuff like that. No shade to nobody that do. I, that's just not what I'm into. But I also mm-hmm. am self aware. Because I do research yeah. a lot and I apply a lot of my behaviors to a lot of behaviors I research about and stuff like that. And, you know, I call a spade a spade. But um, I, I appreciate that because it definitely was a depression thing that I had going on. And then, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 it comes now. It's seasonal. Yeah. Actually. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you know Debbie Dev? Uh, Yeah. She's a radio personality in LA. She married a, 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 She's married a football, football player, right? The one from the Houston. She was playing yeah, on the I Houston, know, I know her, Texas. Yeah. She now, I haven't, I used to be friends with Debbie back in the day. I haven't spoken to her a couple of years, but I still follow her on IG. And from following her IG, I know that she works with Deepak Chopra out there in LA. Um, so maybe you, you need to connect with Debbie Dev because they yes, out there doing like spiritual retreats and all awesome. that. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm a DM changed my life. He really did. That's yeah. like, that, that changed my life, that whole, that whole journey. And then it's exciting because I'm still on the same journey. But it's getting better though because I feel more enlightened. That's, be, that's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I now, like um, on IG, you go by Miss Yeah Ho, and yeah, that's such know. a that's <laughs> such a ubiquitous ad lib. Um, you know, first time I remember hearing that ad lib just from that your crew is hard to kill. Which also Three Six Mafia also people don't realize this, but even though y'all was doing your own Memphis flavor hip hop, y'all always pay tribute to the East Coast. We, you know, yeah. we talk about I'm fresh. You sure. talk about. It's, it's, it's sampling Jay Z for hard to kill. But so, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I want to know where yeah ho comes from. Um, just being like Memphis, we talk a lot of shit in Memphis. Like, okay, we curse a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. You know, like, um, crunk, like 
Yeah, ho. Yeah. That, you know, just when you know, just like a- aggressive as possible. Or bitch, ho. <laughs> yeah. Nigga. That type yeah. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ho. It's some crunk oh, stuff. I like, get music. Yeah, ho. So crunk, right. just crunk, being crunk. But right. man, New, uh, New York, yes. I used to, I remember when I used to um, use us uh, was saying faking on jacks. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay-Z, I just used to look up, to, well, still do. Uh, Jay Z, look, Kim was definitely a, a huge influence yeah. on me. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that. But yeah, yeah ho. Why you, I'm trying, I'm, 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 why, why you put, say that about New York, though? New, In terms uh, of, New York, you used to say that? No, no, no. I, I just, because the first time I heard that, that I could remember, yeah, ho being used like prominently in a record is the hard to kill record, and the hard is it's kind of hard not to kill niggas. It's like but a me, oh, and yeah. when we sampled, we took the Jay Z shit. Jay Z, the Jay Z lyric. Oh, yeah, yeah, ho. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then everybody else starts saying, and yep. you know, and I'm just floating around, looking around, like wow, really. <laughs> <laughs> the trendsetter. And the blueprint, wow. man. What can I do? The blueprint. Man? That's a perfect name for the album. That's perfect. Thank you. And this yeah. dude, I got so many projects that I want to do, but that's just how my brain works. It's like, do I do the blueprint? Do I do the blue experience? Do I do an EP? Do a what? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I'm definitely recording great materials and I can't wait to like actually put it together though, album style, so I can actually hear it and really get motivated well no i am motivated but i want to mm. enjoy it i really because i want people to enjoy it that's why i'm really not rushing mm. i don't really like i like putting out music don't get me wrong because i just like to do it but i don't want to like um title something called like the blueprint and then have it not be in the blueprint so right that shit gotta be goddamn executive produce produce you left Three Six mafia after 2001's both worlds 69 because of money disputes but I've heard you later say that you left too soon before the Academy Award for saying it's hard out here for a pimp. Why do you think you left when you did? <laughs> you think you're mean, trying to come on stage? Just, I was just, yeah, I saw him on stage. I was, in, I was actually with a, a dude in a <laughs> hotel room. And I saw this shit. I was like, wow, really? <laughs> Dang. Dang. But now, nah, I mean, I was young. You know, what can I say? You know what I'm saying? I definitely, definitely like... Left to, you know, I, I left uh, based upon emotions, not business. Mm. Yeah, now nah, I was definitely making money with them. You know, and they were young too. So a lot of, you know, we just, we were just young, but it was based upon, it was strictly emotion, strictly mm. emotion. <laughs> you know, money disputes. It was just, you know, young. I was 21 years old. Mm-hmm. But yeah, can mm-hmm. you believe it? Dude, they got a, a, a fucking Oscar for, you know, Frasier Boy writing fucking It's Hard Out Here for a Pimp. Mm-hmm. That's funny. I watched Hustle and Flow the other day too. That that movie so cutthroat. I was like, dang, man, you know. <laughs> is that movie a classic movie? movie? Does that movie but accurately de- de- depict huh? uh, aspects of Memphis culture? Mm, not the accent. <laughs> it's a movie, right? It's a movie, right? Yeah, I'm a fan of Terrence Howard, but the accent was a little more mysterious. Oh, oh, Ter- Terrence Howard's uh, main. It was it was too yeah. country, man. It was, it was that ain't it was how a, we a, talk like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody can't really master them. The, it's good, you know, but he did good. And Craig grew in my boy, so. But yeah, it's like, damn, it got an Oscar. It's hard out here for a pimp. That's motivating to this day. Like, yo, just keep writing, keep working. You know what I'm saying? Just tell never, your story. Never stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Craig is never from stopped. Memphis, right? Who? Craig Brewer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, he just is. did that coming to America, too. Oh, that's right. He is the director mm-hmm. for that. Memphis, I can't wait man. to see that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. They did it at Tyler Perry Studios. Yeah. Um, yeah I want to give a recipes to Coopster. Um, you know, talk to me about his legacy in the culture, his legacy on Memphis hip hop. A lot of people don't know about his impact. <sighs> Man, it's so weird because I be watching shows like The Temptation. Well, not shows, but, you know, just legendary group stories or just mm-hmm. iconic artist stories and stuff like that. And then I have think I'd be like, dang, I knew Coop, I knew Lord Infamous, I knew mm. you know, just so many greats. For me, Coopsta might not be a lot to others, but he was a mm. lot to me because he helped me with my flows. A lot of my um, um, a lot of my classic bars mm. were definitely inspired by him, if not wrote by him. Like mm. one in particular is uh, 
mask to my fucking face. I'm feeding to increase my high. Yeah. I bought this like red as hell. These bitches better recognize. Yeah. Coop came up with that. He had a very melodic flow. He the one that put me on Nirvana, uh, the Team Spirit tape mm-hmm. when we was little kids. You know what I'm saying? He was him and Lord was definitely like the punk rock rockers mm. of the, the group. Coop wanted to sing. I don't even mm. know what the hell he was doing rapping. If Coop Coop really wanted to sing, he was a little uh I wouldn't say a, a little awkward for the group, but he <laughs> wanted to sing. They wanted to rap, so he would always right. end up on the last uh on the last verse because they really <laughs> didn't get him at the time. But here mm. I go again. I say 2020 is like man, dude was cold. Mm. You know, he was singing and rapping and shit at the same time. And the way he was um, sculpting his lyrics and stuff and the way his wordplay was, it's not, it's not easy to do. Trust That's me. Right. Hell That's right. Hell no. I know. People can have a flow and people can have um, some cool, stupid shit to say, but it's still a technique. So even saying yeah. stupid shit, because I That's tried right. to say stupid shit and I sound stupid saying stupid shit. But you got some people <laughs> saying cool saying stupid stuff. But it's a technique to that. You said a word there. <laughs> Because that's what people don't get about. Because people look at me as a real lyrical artist. I'm like, yo, there is an art to not being lyrical and, and just catching the vibe. There's an art to that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah man. And, and, and Coop, Everybody got their lane. Yeah, Coop, Coop did all that. Like I say, singing, rapping, very in, inspo. And yeah, man, rest in peace to my boy, Robert Cooper. Rest in peace. Legendary rest fucking 3 Six Mafia, man. I'm about to get the man right now too. I'm gonna practice on it. Add that to my uh, my uh, yeah. My, please uh, don't. It, my lingo please don't. Uh, repertoire. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, gotta, but, but not man. Not with the G. It gotta be with uh, M-A-N-E. Man. Right. That's man. The yeah. M-A-N-E. I don't know why people put the G on it. M A N G. So yeah, weird. I don't know. I gotta, <laughs> totally man. It's totally man. Mate, all right. I'm about to be from Memphis tomorrow. Um, <laughs> you have a history of doing features with interesting bands with cult followings from Insane Clown Posse to Blood Orange to The Clipping. Is there a Dang. certain X factor to your flow that makes groups say, damn, I need Gangsta Boo on that? Like, I'm honestly, y'all, it's still mind boggling. Because like, mm. I'm just Lola. Like, I'm literally just normal as fuck, but I know I'm not normal as fuck, but it's like, damn. You know, I guess it's just something. Well, no, it ain't a guess. It's something special about me. I possess something that's intriguing. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I know. think it's because you're an originator. I think it's because, um, you know, like you said, with the boot, blueprint, it's like people, when they're looking for a certain uh, sound, there's the smart musicians go to the source. And like I said yeah, earlier... I like I said earlier, you cannot front on the impact of Memphis hip hop. I started on raucous entertainment, doing underground hip hop, really lyrical, miracle, spiritual, that type of shit. Mm-hmm. And I came in the game with El Producto, aka LP. He had a group called Company Flow. And then he you went did? from Company. Yes, that's right. That's my man. He went from Company Flow to Def Jux, right? So <laughs> Jamie is from Brooklyn. I know Jamie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I know yeah. Jamie. I know the underground. Right, bombing on the subway, smoking Swisher Sweets. Not even Swisher Sweets, El Producto Cigars. That's what he's named after. He's named after a New York, New York City cigar, right? So wow. El Producto, as an artist, he's straight New York to me. But he loves oh. Killer Mike, as we all do. So him forming a group with Killer Mike, it was like chocolate and, and, and vanilla. It's like ebony and ivory. And it's like the, the, the combination of Run the Jewels is so ill to me because he knows how to make beats that might sound good on, right? But to me, yeah. he's still that same awkward Brooklyn dude that I knew from back in the day. <laughs> so when I'm listening to a record like Love Again, right? I, when you say, I don't know why they got Gangsta Boo. I'm like, I know why they got Gangsta Boo. Because, you know what I'm saying? What they talking about, ain't nobody gonna rap about that better than Gangsta Boo. Now, Mike, Mike been rapping about fucking, right? But LP, you don't get to hear <laughs> LP rapping about fucking, right? So on that record, he rapping about like he he the only one who took the record real literal. The record is like uh uh she got my dick in the mouth all day. He rapping about getting ahead at eight a.m. on the shit because I'm like <laughs> that's the shit that he would be doing. Some early he got, head. He he would go to bed at early. You know he he he's like I'm not staying up for this head. I'm gonna get the head when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, Start yeah, my day yeah. on with some good head. <laughs> yeah yeah. Now I do notice that though. Like I, and I appreciate that too. Like when I do have people like Dave Hines from Blood Orange, like you know, you know, recognize me and shout out to my girl Venus too. She, uh, she, mm-hmm. it's a lot of tastemakers too that kind of 
put the buzz in in people ear about me or like say they got something with a sample mm-hmm. of some three sticks or uh, maybe it's a, a certain cadence and maybe my name might not come to their mind mm-hmm. firsthand. But then one of the homies might be like, yo, you, I know, boo, you need to get boo. That's, right. that's kind of how the day of uh, the blood orange stuff came about. But, um, man, I thought LP, bro, was an engineer. I, well, I didn't know who he was <laughs> when I did the song. I right, he was right. trying to tell me what to do. I said, Mike. I was like, who is this white boy? I was like, dude, I know how to record. <laughs> and, and Mike was like, nah, nah, that's, he made the beat, he made the beat. Yeah. Man, and just me getting to know that dude, they took me on tour. LP, cool as hell. And he one of the most, man, one of the hardest producers, honestly, I've ever, the way he, he is. Blend his nostalgic New York shit with just the yes, and, and he keep his he keep he keep that RTJ he keep he keep his his circle, like he ain't gonna right. give out them beat. That's right, that's right. I, I, I do feel I'm I'm honored. I feel like you an auxiliary member of the group at this point. Me too. I want to be so bad. <laughs> everybody say that they need to. I need to be in some sort of group like that. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting on. It's like, yo, everybody coming and grabbing me. Okay, let's do something. Yeah, yes. but it's flattering, dude. I ain't gonna lie. Like to be on Crazy Bone first album, to be on Foxy Brown album, to be yeah. on several Lil John albums, to fucking be on Yellow first album with on uh, song with Eminem. Eminem didn't have to jump on that song. I mean, could have really jumped on whatever he wanted to jump on and to shout me out. And what up, Eminem? I like you. He rhymed your name. <laughs> really, he rhymed your name really well. I, I when yeah. I listen, me, me as a uh, performer, a music creator, you know, I know how the studio works. So when I listen to that Yellow Wolf record, I could tell by the way Eminem came in that he wasn't supposed to be on that record. Yeah. I'm like, this was Dave record. He heard it. Yeah. He's like, oh, I need to be on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know he was gonna be on that joint. Then I heard I was like, "What?" Because he, if he he used he he be using um everybody's flow when he get on the song with them, which is yeah. a good thing. Because he, yeah, yeah. And then you know he just was taking some southern shit, and he was like, "Me, yellow whipping gangster boo came here to show you a thing or two by five yeah. bit of food just aimed at you, so we don't got to scream it too." Yeah, ah. yeah. I was yes. like, yes. So it wow. definitely feels so good to be the most known, unknown, and get respected by the great and stuff like that. Definitely keeps me pushing forward because at this point, I do look at it as an art like you do. It's like really poetic for me. It's therapeutic for me. And, you know, at this point, man, I'm just in it. Shit, I'm, I'm knee deep. Well, actually, mm-hmm. I'm way past knee deep. Right. I'm, the most I'm unknown. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm the most fucking unknown. <laughs> mm-hmm. Straight up. But I, I love it, though. That means I got a lot of room to grow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, back to love again. Um, I feel like rap music is always accused of treating women like sex objects. And I feel like there's three responses that can be that you can have to it. One, not to get involved. Two is to own it, like Cardi and Meg and Kim and um Foxy did before them. Or three is to flip it around and treat men like sex objects objects, which is what you did on Love Again. Why was it so important for you to take back the attitude towards sex that you've heard men rap about for so long? Killer Mike told me to just talk my bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And um, I don't know. I was just, I felt like that. When I was like, oh, oh, I had a young player from the hood. Like my pussy real good. Kept me stuck with lots of wood. Yeah. I was just reminiscing. But you- <laughs> yeah, just telling the story. That's what the best part but of you- that. But you've done that. Do. You've done that throughout your career, which is why Mike said, "Talk your bullshit." You know, like that's that's been part right. of your repertoire. Right. You know, it's so interesting because it's like, how many times can I? How many different ways can I say, "Eat this or that"? <laughs> so it gets boring. But it gets it don't get boring, but it gets you know, um, challenging, and that's why that's when the um, I do get inspiration from the the WAPs. Right, and you know yes. what I'm saying, or the 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 uh the, the other young ladies that's out doing anything. I'm Trina. like, oh, okay, yeah, thank you. Well, even when you know Trina cut from the cloth, I'm cut from. Yeah, y'all so from the same era. No more the city girls, you know what I'm saying? Like the chicks that you know learned from the uh, the, the uses. Yeah. They inspired mm-hmm. me to um stay eat my pussy in a different type of way. But and you I also like, you you also got real MC chops. I mean, there's a record. Uh, BWA on Foxy Brown mm-hmm. album Mia X shout out to Mama yeah, Mia X girl. I was just with her too that's my you, have, you have a couple mm-hmm. records with her right and um, yeah. um, but I wanted to ask because to me you know what's your re- remix of Where Them Dollars At with, with, with the Dolls and this record and doing a record with LeChat and you always go out your way to support and collaborate with other female artists um, yeah. explain to us why 
because if I like if I like if I like you, then I if I if I, if I like the way you rap, then I'm gonna wanna fuck with you and shit like that. It's really no particular reason why I mean if I like it, I like it. I mean, and I, I just you know that's really that's really it. I support yeah. it if I like it. What I always go out my way is too though is out bump everybody I'm on the song with. Hey, <laughs> no, that's what I'm talking that about. I go yes. out my way to do. Then I, I, I definitely think about that. Each bar, like it, it, sometimes it might take me four hours just to um, say get two two lines because mm-hmm. those two bars at the end or the beginning got to be like a, a classic, or I'm just not gonna feel right. You know what I'm saying? You call yourself the blueprint and have an album of the same name come now. So can you share with us any of the names of the producers or some of the features? Well, I can, I, me and Drummer Boy been out here working. That's what oh, I came to. Shout out to Drummer Boy. To, yes, to work with him, my bestie, L. Um, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, let's see, let's see, let's see. No, it's not, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about the features, but I will say this, um, I had OJ the Juice Man in the studio with me last mm-hmm. night. He's a legend in Atlanta. Uh, Mm-hmm. And I'm just really like composing different um, sounds. I'm working with this guy named Mike Waller. He's a classical music composer. Um, and mm-hmm. he got a couple albums out. And so he's allowing me to use his albums as samples with different producers if I want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I took, I, I, you know, I took his request and I was like, well, fuck, I can pair you with drama or you know what I'm saying? Then I, I then I became more interested. And I'm like, well, shit, let's write some notes together. Wow. So that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's still in the baby steps, but it's super like gonna be extremely produced well, like live shit, just not beat. Um, so it's gonna be a lot of gangsta boo produ- production, meaning composing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? No composing, doubt. Composing, man. That's right. That's right. Nice. That's what we gotta take it. <laughs> That's what we gotta I know, take. I know how I like my sound, and I like I I've been around the great, you know what I'm saying? Paula mm-hmm. Juices and beat maker motherfuckers. Like, um, so I've seen a lot of producers. You know, I just seen it all. To be honest, yeah. Well, look, um, well, I know the same. We have been completely uh, enamored with you, and we are honored and blessed to have you. And um, thank I, you so you know, much. I got one more question before we let you get out of here. Um, I heard you once say that. Right now, age matters less than ever in rap. Um, but you also called yourself young. We all out here young compared to how our parents was when they was our age. They wasn't Hello. doing it. You know what I'm saying? Um, 3-6 Mafia, you know, y'all was set up for a tour and y'all was about to roll out before the pandemic. So 3-6 Mafia, uh, well, I saw an old interview with Paul when he was talking about the, the Mafia 6 project. And he was, uh, I think it was Vlad or somebody asked him, he said, uh, Who's in the group now? He said, Paul says, shit, whoever not in jail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially yeah, at this point, you know, 3 Six Mafia has been, been through a lot of ups and downs. Everybody older. Yeah, yeah. Everybody got kids and everybody got families and c- different commitments now. Essentially the group is... I don't to- have kids and I'm, I don't have kids and I'm single. Okay, well, I'm glad you put that out there for fellas. She's single. Holla <laughs> <laughs> at your girl. Hey. <laughs> Oh Happily shit! Single. <laughs> um, but <laughs> so essentially, y'all back, y'all back together, back mixing it up. Uh, tell us what's next for all the three six mafia fans. Man, you know what? Just definitely more music. Juicy just dropped his album. Paul's yes, still doing yes. his thing. I'm still doing my thing as an individual. Crunchy doing his thing. I just dropped a song with my boy Nick Cook called Fresh. So that's available yeah. online. And I didn't even really put like much promotion behind it. I just really just dropped it. Just. Because I was, honestly, because I was bored. And I was like, Nick, we recorded this song. Dude, let's just drop it. He was like, all right, cool. And so <laughs> I dropped it. But it's fresh as fuck. And right. um, I definitely co-produced it along with him. So just pretty much, you know, just stay tuned. We do got a lot of stuff going on. And we are still going to be traveling for sure together. Movies, TV mm-hmm. shows, a lot of stuff going to be happening with the group. Just got to stay tuned. No doubt. I'm excited, Who's- though. You know what I'm saying? I just got to stay focused, man. Who's the artist you did the Black Haven Freestyle with? Oh, my boy, I don't know, Jeffrey. Shout out to Jeffrey and Xavier Wolf. Um, yeah, I, I like working with um, them. They are from Memphis, mm-hmm. but they don't sound like they from Memphis. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't have the typical Memphis cadence. I'm um, the average Memphis cadence, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they I was like, like LA. I, I bring that record up because it was like quarantine brags. It, it was like, it was like, it's just how you stunt in quarantine. You was like, I'm in LA. And he was the, the rapper on the track was like, I got Bravo. I was like, that's a real quarantine stunt. You yes, know what I'm saying? Like, 
When on you bragging about it. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Bravo yeah. TV? Yeah, he was bragging about his cable package on the song. I was Listen, I if you was... got the housewives, you can get through quarantine, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm about to watch them two nights. Oh, the Atlanta <laughs> wasn't, it wasn't that good. I, I feel fortunate. And me feeling fortunate definitely helps in whatever pain I do may have. And mm. this opportunity is like this. And just the motivation, it just let me know that I'm on the right path. And, dude, we are all so young and youthful, and we got so much knowledge to spread. Yes. So as long mm. as I'm able to do that, really, I can really do whatever. So I'm, I definitely feel fortunate. I had no idea I was going to be a part of a fucking legacy. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's dope. It's like, yo, this shit is cool as hell. No doubt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Gangsta Boo. Give it up. The People's Party is proud to have her. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. We appreciate I you. That.